Who are you? I have existed longer than any living thing. I am the womb that protected and nurtured the beginnings of all life. Through me, man has worshipped his deities. I am his supplier of food. I am the backbone of his commerce. Without me, he would cease to exist. In my end is Earth's end. But who are you? What place is this? Does it matter? These people are mourning. Yes, for a boy of 15. These people think I killed him. Where man has attempted to control me unwisely, I am forced to carry a terrible disease. But surely this is an isolated disease. Rare. It is now found in 71 countries and afflicts over 200 million people. Rare? Well, we certainly have no such thing in my country. You have missed the point. Here it is one disease, elsewhere another. In the world's wealthiest nation, industrial wastes have made the drinking water of 79 modern cities unfit for human consumption. I am not a respecter of national boundaries, nor are the infections I am forced to carry. <laughs> I am all things to man. I am the symbol of rebirth. He sees in me a cleansing of the spirit. I am his servant. Man believes I am eternal. You are not? Once, perhaps. But through his neglect, man has encumbered me with his own mortality. Whether on the steppes, the great plains, or the rice paddies of the Orient, when I am present in abundance, little thought is given to me. Little care is taken of my health. In the so-called developed world, I keep man's industries alive. And yet those same industries threaten my life. Man has loved me. His children have frolicked along my shores. But I ask, for how long? Yes, man has loved me, and I have always been generous to him. has had abundant harvests from the seas.
But look what has happened here in this tiny fishing village. A man and a boy. The man is dying from eating fish poisoned by industrial wastes. And the boy? Infected too from birth by his mother who ate these fish. And here is the villain which has killed 6% of this town's people. If this were New York, Tokyo or London, 500,000 would be dead. Man shares me with all living things, all of nature whose beauty he relishes. Yet there are a growing number of places on this planet where man has ravaged the land by improper planting and harvesting of crops, by the wanton cutting of entire forests, by overgrazing. In man's time, he has destroyed as much fertile land as still remains. Perhaps we can see the future here. Because man despoiled the vegetation, it no longer rains. The water table has dropped. The fertile topsoil simply blows away, along with man's dreams. In these areas, man's only hope for survival is his ingenuity. And now these are lands where the struggle to survive means work, seven days a week for every woman and every child. Their reward, a few drops of water. Why does this girl dig in the sand? She is digging for her life. She is luckier than most. She lives only four miles from this dry riverbed, where she must dig to reach me. And she is not alone. How can some people take me for granted and treat me with such utter disregard, while to others I am more precious than gold? By the year 2000, an urban world will need four times as much water as it does today. You must plan now, or man may someday walk his canyons of steel and deserts of concrete in search of water. My future too? My answer is simple. It need not be your future. It is entirely in your hands. I have existed longer than any living thing. I am the womb that protected and nurtured the beginnings of all life. Through me, man has worshipped his deities. I am his supplier of food. I am the backbone of his commerce.